Welcome to the reunion of the members of the hit drama on MTV, Sense and Sensibility. It's been a year since Eleanor, Marianne, Mrs. Dashwood, Edward, Brandon, Lucy, and Willoughby have all been back together. Today, we will have them talk about the events that transpired in their lives almost a year ago and see where they all are today. We're going to start off today's show with individual interviews and then continue on to the group reunions. Get ready for a great show today filled with drama, old rivals, and plenty of closure. What is your relationship with your sisters like? My sisters and I are also very close. We are very family-oriented people, so we always come to each other for support. Marianne also often has boy troubles, but I always enjoy giving her advice, even though she ignores me like 99% of the time. Margaret, too, is starting to come to us for real advice, and I think as she gets older, we will all become even closer. It's really special relationship that we all have, especially considering that we are all still best friends, even after my and Marianne's weddings. Money or love? Why? I would always choose love over money. If I valued money more than love, to be honest, it wouldn't have, I wouldn't have married Eleanor. Realistically speaking, money can bring pleasure by making my life easier. However, if I didn't have love, I would be living without a purpose. Although life might, might be tougher without having economic support, working for my loved ones is what keeps me going. Eleanor is the reason why I'm living. If I had chosen someone who was wealthy yet who I didn't love, I would be suffering just like Willoughby. Could you tell us a little more about what happened between you and Robert during your engagement with Edward? Well, Robert came by quite a few times to try to convince Edward not to marry me. Edward, of course, wouldn't budge about it. Poor guy was really in love with me. Well, anyways, I had met Robert at a party a few weeks before, and while there was definitely chemistry there, I guess we both ignored it for a while. When Robert came back to talk to Edward and me, I couldn't ignore the feelings I had started to develop for him. Edward was a mess when he found out but he loved me, so he knew he had to just let me go, you know. What is your relationship like with each of your sisters? Oh goodness, I love my sisters endlessly. Eleanor is my best friend other than Brandon, and I don't know what I would do without her. Without her hope for my future, I probably wouldn't be alive today. She always protects me, takes care of me, and loves me. Margaret is a sweetie too. She's an energetic bundle of fun, and I can always rely on her to cheer me up. What do you do during your free time? I enjoy playing the piano and singing. I don't really like modern pop music. They're just too loud and inappropriate. I write my own songs and record them. If I had to get a job, it would definitely be in music. When did you start noticing the similarities between the lives of Marianne? Do these similarities make you like Marianne more? Well, first of all, I want to make it very clear that I don't love Marianne because of her similarities to Eliza. I love Marianne for Marianne. Their similarities are simply qualities that I think are valuable, good qualities in a girlfriend or wife. As I got to know Marianne better, I began to see more and more similarities between her and Eliza. They both are very outgoing and forward. They both shared the upbeat attitude that kept me on my feet. That type of personality keeps me upbeat as well. Otherwise, I tend to slip into a more subdued, boring state, which is what you probably saw when I was um, pining after Marianne. What is your definition of a good husband? A good husband for me or for my daughters is someone who loves them full-heartedly and is good-looking. My daughters are very attractive. A good husband would also be someone who can keep up with them. Margaret, for example, is a very adventurous girl, and I want someone for her who will be compatible with her adventurous spirit. Margaret is still young, but I mean, it's never too early to start thinking about it. Describe your relationship with Mrs. Gray. What can I say? She has a lot of money. That's all I care about. I find myself leaving for weeks at a time on business trips to London just to get out of the house. I can't stand that lady. Always moping around, complaining about the weather. Willoughby, it's so hot out. Willoughby, my hands are freezing. Fill me a fire. Willoughby, my dear, please run into town for me. Ugh. I spend most nights on the couch just trying to get away from her. If it weren't for the money, I would have surely found another wife by now. Willoughby, when did you realize that you're actually falling in love with Marianne? When I was in Devonshire, I cherished my time with Marianne. But I already had my eye on Mrs. Gray and her fortune. 
I lied and told myself that I saw us as just friends, and it wasn't until I found myself trapped in an engagement with Miss Gray that I realized I loved Marianne. Aww. I missed all the talks we had together, something my wife is utterly incapable of. I regret ever leaving her. Why did you choose money over love if you knew love would make you happier? I was an idiot, and I didn't realize that love would make me happier. Growing up, I was taught that you could only be happy if you first had money and then had companionship with others who also had money. It wasn't until I had money and no love that I realized that money can't make you as happy as the people, or rather, the person that you love. Marianne, how did your emotions towards Brandon change after Willoughby left you? After Willoughby left me, I was devastated. I thought that he was my soulmate. But Brandon helped me through that hard time. Our common interests gave me someone to talk to, and I began to look forward to spending time that day with him. When he mentioned that he would have to leave for London in a couple of days, I couldn't bear being without him. I realized that I want to spend the rest of my life with him. Brandon, you and Eleanor had a lot of close moments throughout the last few years. Did you ever start to develop feelings for her? No, I've, I've always seen Eleanor as my confidant, and I've never developed feelings for her, although I did enjoy spending time with her. I was, I was too overcome with sorrow at seeing Willoughby take my beloved Marianne to, to develop any feelings for Eleanor. What do you think of Willoughby's behaviors in relation to Eliza? I think Willoughby has handled the situation terribly. He had relations with Eliza, knowing the risks, then he disappeared. I mean, it's the 21st century. Who the hell has a one-night stand without taking the proper precautions? And even after he left, knowing about the child, he just went and married a rich woman, leaving his struggling child and his mother behind. I am horrified he can live with himself. And how is Eliza doing? Eliza's doing well, considering her situation. I've been checking in on her and making sure that she and her daughter are doing well and I have hope that they will both have a long, happy, and fortunate life ahead. She and Willoughby are currently only in contact for him to pay child support, and she is happy to have nothing else to do with him. I am happy to not have any contact with him. But let me tell you, Willoughby, if you don't pay that child support... Brandon! Willoughby, why did you ever talk to Eleanor instead of going to Marianne? Did you ever have any intention of talking to Marianne again? Well, I felt so horrible about betraying her that I just couldn't face her. But I wanted her to know that I love her. And I decided to tell Eleanor so she could inform her sister of my innocence. Innocence? Oh, I pity you. But you can't say you're innocent. You have to take responsibility for your actions. Marianne, do you ever still think of Willoughby? Never. I'm in love with Brandon. While I will never fully forgive Willoughby for what he did, as I said, I pity him. He decided to abandon everything that we had together and marry someone who had the money to cater to his lifestyle. And don't ever get me sorted on what he did to Eliza. He's a pig and he will self-destruct. So Eleanor, at least you brought up Edward's name in most of the conversations, but you seemed pretty calm about that. How are you really feeling? How did you manage to stay calm? Well, I know that Lucy knew that I was in love with Edward, and she was just informing me about the status of the relationship to annoy me and try to get a rise out of me. It was very immature. And while I admit it was annoying and hurtful, it was more a demonstration of a lack of intelligence and character than showing of any weakness of mine. Knowing that helped me stay calm through her incessant chatter. Lucy, while you are still dating Edward, did you notice any reactions between El Edward and Eleanor? Oh yeah, it drove me crazy. There was a ton of sexual tension and I felt that I was third wheeling. I was his fiance. Whenever they were together, it got really awkward. And then Eleanor's annoying little sister, Marianne. Excuse you, don't pull Marianne into this. She at least kept the room from dead silence and your idiotic and irrelevant comments. Please do excuse my behavior, Lucy. It was a tad excessive, though I beg of you, do not insult my sister. Edward. Why didn't you leave Lucy when you started to have feelings for Eleanor? I didn't leave her because I had made a commitment 
In today's world, too many people cheat and lie in relationships, and I wasn't going to be one of those people. When did your feelings for Eleanor overtake those for Lucy? The first time I saw Eleanor, I fell in love. I pretended as if I liked her as a friend, but deep inside, I knew there was more than that. I just couldn't break my promise to Lucy. But as soon as she left me, I knew I couldn't miss my opportunity to marry Eleanor. You didn't love me? Well, that wraps up our segment. Thank you all for coming to talk with us today. Crazy, and now my heart's breaking, but I just keep on saying. One, two, three, three, two, one.